meeting is open to the public via video and audio conference and is being carried live by CAN TV. Members of the public are on mute in order to reduce background noise and disruptions. We have a court reporter making a transcript of this meeting. In addition to police board members, we have several city officials here with us this evening. I will begin by taking attendance so it is clear who is participating in this meeting. Please say here after I read your name. Police Board Vice President Paula Wolf. Here. Board Member Stephen Block. Here. Board Member Morali Cusack. Here. Board Member Nanette Dorley. Here. Board Member Jorge Montes. Jorge. Jorge is going to be joining us uh, when, he, when he gets here. I'll call him out. Uh, Interim Superintendent of Police Eric Carter. You're on mute, Sue, but we got you. Here, good evening. Chief Administrator of Civilian Office of Police Accountability, Andrea Kirsten. Here. Deputy Inspector General for Public Safety, Tabara Richardson. Here. Chief of Chicago Police Department's Bureau of Internal Affairs, Yolanda Talley. Here. Chief of CPD's Bureau of Detectives, Antoinette Ersetti. Here. Deputy Chief of CPD's Office of Constitutional Policing and Reform, Stephen Chung. Here. Uh, Assistant General Counsel to the Superintendent, Scott Spears. Here. Executive Administrator of the Police Board, Jasmine Rollins. Here. Uh, I also see Deputy Chief Fred Meelan. Here. We have uh, Jorge Montes, Board Member Jorge Montes. And uh, we have the CCPSA uh, board member here as well, uh, Romel Terry. We're gonna hear from her a little bit later too. We will now proceed to the items on the meeting agenda. We will have time at the end of the meeting for public comments. Once again, members of the public are currently on mute in order to reduce background noise and disruptions. When we get to the public comment portion of the meeting, we will unmute each speaker. Is there a motion to approve the drafts of the minutes of the board's public meetings and closed meetings held on January 19th and February 16th? So moved, Paula Wolf. Second, Riley Cusack. Thank you. I will now call on members of the board for their votes. Wolf? Aye. Block? Stephen? He's frozen. Aye. All right, thank Aye. you. Thank you. Aye. Cusack? Aye. Dorley? Aye. Montez? Jorge Montez? Um, I, I, I know that, well, and I vote in favor of the motion. I think we lost Jorge. Uh, the motion passes. The next regular public meeting will be held Thursday, April 20th at 7.30 p.m. Whether this will be an in-person meeting or a remote meeting will be determined closer to the meeting date. The police board meets in executive session to consider various matters. Those discussions are closed to the public as authorized by sections 2C, 1, 4, 11, and 21 of the Illinois Open Meetings Act. Information on matters discussed in the executive sessions is included in the minutes of the meetings posted on our website. Is there a motion to close future executive session sessions as authorized by these sections of the Open Meetings Act? So moved, Paula Bull. Second, Mariley Cusack. I will now call on the board members for their votes. Wolf? Aye. Block? Aye. Cusack? Aye. Dorley? Aye. Montez? Uh, and I vote in favor of the motion. The motion passes. Um, I'm pleased this evening to introduce Commissioner Ramel Terry from the CCPSA, who's going to give us an update on the superintendent search. Commissioner Terry. Thank you so much, uh, President Foreman, for this opportunity and for the rest of the police board. Good evening to 
all of CPD, COPA, and all of our community residents that are listening in. Um, so yesterday we formally made our announcement about the superintendent process and so wanted to have an opportunity to share in this space um, a bit about our process and some of the goals that the commission has as it relates to the superintendent uh, filling the superintendent vacancy. So a quick overview of our process. Uh, by law, when there is a vacancy for the police superintendent, the Community Commission for Public Safety and Accountability, also known as CCPSA, is responsible for leading the search to find candidates. Um, the commission has to conduct a national search to, this, to fill this position. And from the day the vacancy is created, we have 120 days to ask for applications, review applications, interview any candidates, conduct extensive background checks, and choose the top three candidates that will be presented to the mayor. Um, once we send those three finalists to the mayor, the mayor will then have 30 days to select one of the three candidates or reject all of the candidates and ask uh, the commission for a new list. And once the mayor selects a superintendent, there is a commission meeting where we can give public comment on the mayor's appointee and the appointee then can answer any questions from the commission and the public. Then after that, the city council has a confirmation hearing for the nominee, and then um, it finalizes that vacancy. Um, Superintendent Brown's resignation became official today. So the commission has you know, 120 days from today to identify three finalists for the mayor. And so that is no later than July 14th of this year. So very quick and short timeline. So some of the goals that we have as it relates to our search process, our top goal is to find the best candidate to lead the Chicago Police Department. Um, we're looking for a visionary leader with proven track record of increasing public safety and working collaboratively with a wide range of people, including Black communities, other communities of color, marginalized groups, and historically disenfranchised populations. Um, we're also committed to a search process that is inclusive, collaborative, and community-driven. So this is definitely a first in the history of this process where it will be open um, for community input and even other stakeholders as it relates to who will be the next superintendent for the Chicago Police Department. So some of the next steps that we have today, we sent out a request for qualifications to hire people to support the commission in the search process. Our goal is to have people under contract to support the search within the next 30 days. Um, over the next month, you know, we'll work to ensure the inclusion of diverse voices and perspectives in our search process. We'll get input on what qualities, characteristics, and skills people believe we need in a superintendent. Um, we'll hold at least, so there's likely more, that's why we're saying at least four public meetings um, to allow Chicago residents to provide recommendations and input. And these will vary across the city. We'll have one on, meeting on the south side, one on the west side, one on the north side, and we'll also host one virtually. We'll also deeply engage, uh, engage deeply uh, to get the input from Chicago police officers. Uh, some of that has already been underway. We'll also get opinions and ideas from local and national experts. And after we get feedback, we'll finalize the job description and then begin inviting applications. So our goal is to get the application out in just over a month. And after we have a search form on board, uh, candidates will have about 30 days to submit applications. And then the commission will have around 60 days to narrow down the list, conduct interviews and background checks, and just settle on those three finalists that I previously mentioned. Um, as I've already stated, we're committed to working with the next mayor to ensure a successful selection process, and the commission will remain focused on its mission to serve all of Chicago residents. Um, throughout this process, we'll keep the public engaged through regular updates, 
at our monthly public meetings and on our CCPSA website. So I definitely encourage you, if you're not already following us on all the various social media platforms, as well as YouTube, please do so that you can be aware of where we are in this process and what's up next. So that's all that I have. And I thank you for this opportunity. Thank you, Commissioner. Any questions? All right, but thank you so much. We really appreciate it. Um, next, we have police disciplinary cases. We'll take final action. Um, give me one second here. All right, the police board is authorized by the Open Meeting Act has considered in a closed meeting one police disciplinary case. The board will now take final action on this case. Regarding case number 22 PB 3002, the superintendent filed charges against police officer Ernesto Guzman Sanchez, recommending that he be discharged from the Chicago Police Department for charges stemming from domestic incidents while off duty. The superintendent and the accused officer have agreed to settle the case and have the officer serve a suspension without pay for a period of one year. Is there a motion to approve the settlement agreement and order one year suspension of Officer Guzman Sanchez? So moved, Paul Wolf. Second, Mariah Cusack. I will now call on members of the board for their votes. Wolf? Aye. Locke? Aye. Cusack? Aye. Dorley? Aye. Montez, did we get Jorge Aye. back? Aye. And I vote in favor of the motion. Voting in favor are board members Wolf, Block, Cusack, Dorley, Montez, and myself. The motion passes by a vote of six to zero. A written order for this case will be drafted, sent to the parties, and then posted on the board's website. Yeah. The police board as authorized by the Open Meeting Act has considered several appeals from applicants for a Chicago police officer position who have been removed from the eligibility list due to the results of a background examination. The board will now take final action on these appeals. Is there a motion to adopt the appeals officer's findings and recommendation and affirm the decision to disqualify the applicant for the following appeals. Numbers 22, AA 06, 08, 09, 10, 13, and adopt the appeals officer's findings and recommendation and reverse the decision to disqualify the applicant for the following appeals. Numbers 22, AA 12. So moved, Paul Wolf. Second, Marali Cusack. I would now call on board members for their votes. Wolf? Aye. Block? Aye. Cusack? Aye. Dorley? Aye. Montez? Aye. And I vote in favor of the motion. Voting in favor are board members Wolf, Block, Cusack, Dorley, Montez, and myself to 22AA10. The motion passes by a vote of six to zero. The written decisions of these appeals will be entered as of today's date, sent to the parties and posted on the board's website within five days. <clears throat> Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the police board has entered three general omnibus orders on conducting disciplinary hearings via two-way video conferencing using Zoom. Given declines in the number of COVID cases and Governor Pritzker's recent announcement that the state's public health emergency will formally end on May 11th, is there a motion to adopt the draft of a fourth general omnibus order that has been posted on the board's website along with the agenda for this meeting? So moved, Paula Wolf. Second, Riley Cusack. Thank you. I will now call on members of the board for their votes. Wolf? Aye. Block? Aye. Cusack? Aye. Dorley? Aye. Montez? Aye. And I vote in favor of the motion. The motion passes. Should we just 
quickly say that it's about certain conditions under which the hearings can continue to be done remotely, just so people know what we're talking about. Sure. So um, during COVID, we made the decision. Um, we made the decision to both have have uh, hearings, but also some of the uh, formal processes that take place for our hearings um, over Zoom. Uh, we did that both for the safety of, of our hearing officers, for the, the respondents, and for the superintendents, for the attorneys. And so um, there are definitely some situations where it still makes sense. Evidentiary hearings, for example, don't necessarily need to be in person. Um, and if there are witnesses who can uh, um, come and testify via Zoom to make it easier, then those are the things. Assuming no parties disagree with that, if we can come to an agreement and this makes it easier, still continues to pe keep people safe. Um, so, so that's kind of what this order is about, just generally trying to find ways to make it uh, more efficient. We certainly have found that this system is, is become an efficient tool for us and, uh, and it, it certainly helps to keep people safe. So thank you for that, Paula. Um, next up, um, first, before we ask for the superintendent report, just in case he happens to be watching, I uh, really wanted to thank superintendent, former superintendent Brown for the years of service. I got an opportunity to get to know him during the uh, superintendent search process. And it was, uh, it was definitely a good opportunity to, uh, to work with him over the years and, and, and you know, from a professional perspective, as well as we got to know each other personally too. And so, uh, so really man, grateful for your years of service to the city of Chicago, um, leaving the department in really good hands with uh, interim superintendent Eric Carter. I've also got an opportunity to, to get to know you interim soup for over the last three or four years as well and looking forward to your leadership. So thank you for, for taking over this very important role. And so uh, we all look forward to working with you, but for now, we'll go with, the, with your report. Thank you. I'm looking forward to work, continuing to work with the police board as well. Uh, good evening to all the police board members and community members present for this month's meeting. Um, as you know, last week was a difficult week for the Chicago Police Department. It was a week filled with newsworthy events, uh, some joyous, some sad. Our members joined the Velasquez Lasso family to pay our final respects to our fallen brother, Police Officer Andres Velasquez Lasso, who was killed in the line of duty on March 1st, 2023. We also graduated 276 new police officers, and we continue to prepare for the department's transition amid Superintendent Brown's announcement of his resignation. I speak on behalf of the department, thanking him for his tireless leadership and for drawing on his deep passion for service and public safety to help impact Chicago. We wish him well in his next in chapter. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, the men and women of Chicago Police Department have continued working to protect the city and its residents. We are dedicated to visibility, engagement, and collaboration by working in the community and with the communities we serve. Our efforts continue to reflect the progress. At the end of February, we marked 12 consecutive months of double-digit declines in gun violence citywide. Either date, homicides are down 12%, shootings have decreased by 6%, and the number of shooting victims fell 3% citywide compared to this time in 2022. Chicago's officers have taken over 2,211 guns off the streets since January 1st, which is marking a 3% increase over the same time period for 2022. They recovered 38 firearms this past weekend alone, and we'll keep doing what it takes to combat crime and violence in our streets. The strategic deployments continue in the top 55 beats where more than half of the city's violent crime occurs. And we are committed to ensuring Chicago and safety, whether in their homes or in the city or on public transportation. Chicago is dependent on the CTA every day and our number one priority is keeping riders safe. Officers are out and visible across the transit system and they've made more than 300 arrests citywide on CTA platforms so far this year. And total crime is down 7% across CTA system year to date. Earlier this week, officers made an arrest related to a fatal stabbing incident on a CTA platform. Because of ongoing collaboration and communication between CPD and CTA, 
including te technological resources, we apprehended the offender in just 13 hours after the incident. Officers are putting into work and it shows that the department's efforts enhance public safety and engage our communities persist in numerous ways. Our recruitment unit has had hard work, excuse me, has been hard at work talking to the next generation of police officers around the city of Chicago and across the country. They've also hosted entrance exams across multiple days in both January and February, with the latest set set for March 24th through the 26th. Last week, we welcomed 276 police officers, building on our goal to strengthen diversity in the department. 77% of that class are people of color and 35% are women. With these numbers, <clears throat> while these numbers are worth uh, celebrating, we still have much work to do. And that's why we joined the 30 by 30 initiative, pledging to increase the number of women in recruit classes by 30% nationally by the year 2023. To, come, to kick off this week, we made a commitment to advocate and support women in law enforcement and their careers in department and across the nation. CPD knows <clears throat> we're in this together and every part for ensuring diversity to enhancing public safety is about growing community trust. I want to thank you all for your service and back to you, President Foreman. Thank you, thank you. Superintendent. Um, we would like to take a moment of silence for Officer Vasquez Lasso um, and our condolences to the family and our prayers with uh, with all of the Chicago Police Department. Moment of silence, please. Thank you. Um, next, uh, Chief Administrator Kirsten, Administrator Kirsten. Thank you, President Foreman and members of the police board, as well as um, CPD and other community stakeholders who are present. Um, first of all, I want to also express my appreciation for Superintendent Brown's service um, during his time and tenure here with the Chicago Police Department, and certainly to congratulate interim Superintendent Carter. Um, I know from my perspective as leading COPA, it's uh, it's helpful helpful to understand that there's leadership at the helm who knows the inner workings of the department. Obviously, you have a long career uh, with that agency, and so your leadership will be so critically important during this time of transition, both for the department and for broader city government. So thank you, uh, Super Interim Superintendent Carter. Um, I just want to report out on some of the statistics that we always talk about on these meetings. Uh, we received at COPA last month 416 complaints and notifications. Um, and of those, 81 uh, fell under COPA's jurisdiction and will remain at our agency for further investigation. Um, again, as we typically see, the highest kind of complaint was Fourth Amendment allegations. Um, last month, we had three officer-involved shooting notifications, um, and we also concluded five officer-involved shooting investigations. Uh, we total cl closed a total of 94 cases last month. Of those, the vast majority of cases, I think 78 of them were closed um, after a preliminary investigation determined that there was not sufficient evidence to serve allegations of misconduct. So 78 of the 94 cases closed last month did not result in allegations being served against any officers, but of the cases where officers were served with allegations, um, more than half of those did have sustained findings. So that keeps our sustained case rate at around 12% overall, which is again right aligned with the national average uh, for police misconduct investigations. Uh, last month we had one video release uh, that we um, did under the city's video release policy, 12 separate community engagement events, uh, and then something that we are excited about, which I know um, our first deputy Ephraim Edie spoke about at last month's police board meeting, but it's the launch of our first ever COPA People's Academy. Um, we've talked about this a little in this forum before, but so that's um, sort of a mini condensed version of the training that our investigative staff goes through uh, to come into COPA as an, as an employee giving a little bit of that information and skill sets, um, sort of opening the doors to our process to the public that we serve uh, so that they can understand more about civilian oversight, we can answer questions about our qualifications and the subject matter expertise that we bring to this work. Um, and we can also raise awareness both here locally in Chicago, but also abroad about civilian oversight and the critically important role that it plays in public safety. Uh, happy to report we've got um, 
80 people from within Chicago that are planning to attend our first ever People's Academy, 50 plus people from various institutions and government agencies around the country, representing cities all across the country. Uh, 14 different civilian oversight entities are gonna be joining us remotely, uh, five different academic institutions, and six various community and other government organizations um, from cities outside of Chicago. So we're gonna try to speak to two different audiences um, throughout this six week course, both the local audience here at home and then um, our fellow practitioners and people interested in public safety that are looking to Chicago to see and learn from the model that we have here um, from cities across our country. So we're excited about that and excited for it to be taking place. It will be a hybrid, both, both virtual and in person at the Joint um, Public Safety Training Campus, the um, Bauer Plumber Training Campus. Uh, and again, that's you know about COPA really wanting to recognize that accountability is part of public safety. So for us to have um, a very small uh, presence in that facility, I think sends an important message to how much Chicago values its accountability system uh, here. And then lastly, I too just wanna take a moment to, to share some remarks um, regarding the loss of an officer in the line of duty. You know, I think it's too many times that we've had to make uh, remarks and speeches like this. And I think we can all collectively acknowledge um, the broken hearts that are felt across the city upon his death. Um, there's truly not a greater act of sacrifice than laying down one's life um, for the safety and protection of all members of the city. And that's certainly a sacrifice that we know we ask of each and every police officers and their families. It's a sacrifice that they're willing to make, but it's just simply one that shouldn't be have to be asked at all. Um, since his death, all of Chicago has certainly come to learn about the many ways in which Officer Vasquez Lasso exemplified the very best of us. His love for his family, his friends, his colleagues, his culture, and his city, our city, uh, have been made so clear by those who knew him best. Um, but truly, it's it's been his own words, which he shared on social media prior to his death, which I think serve as perhaps the most profound reminder to us all. And those words being, um, this is what part of his quote, that behind this uniform, there's another human being just like you. Um, Officer Vasquez Lasso has been described as someone who saw the humanity in the community that he served and someone who understood that as an officer, he had to be an integral part of that community. Uh, as our city continues to grieve his loss, I hope that we seek to honor his legacy by remembering that we are one community, uh, fractured and divided at times, differing perspective, perspectives on and solutions to our many problems, uh, but one community nonetheless. So peace to the memory of Officer Andres Vasquez Lasso. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> um, I will now call upon members of the public who signed up in advance to speak. To ensure that we have time for all speakers, there's a two minute time limit on comments. Um, speakers, you can unmute yourself by pressing star six. Our first speaker is Deji Allen. Deji Allen. Hi, um, I'm a member of the youth, uh, a youth council that is based on healing, social justice, police accountability, things like that. Um, so thank you for having me to be able to come and speak. Um, it's always a pleasure. And recently we had a ball into the vote event um, where we just reached out to um, community members, mainly on the west side, to try and get them out to have a, a little community builder with a basketball tournament and also um, getting people registered to vote and also um, teams involved in making the challenge so they could be student judges. Um, so just a little bit of an update of what we've been doing recently, um, and we're also looking now to hold to um, hold another community builder event on the west uh, south side. Sorry, um, and I think that's really all the updates that they wanted me to share. Um, but yeah. Okay. Our next speaker, Mr. Robert Moore. Mr. Moore, you can unmute one of the phones. Um, see, I, I, I hate to end, adjourn the meeting because I know Mr. Moore is going to get on me next month if I do so. But having no response, I think I'm left with very little choice. All right. At this time, all members of the public who signed up in advance to speak have been called upon. 
Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved, Paula Wolf. Mari uh, Stephen Morali. Second, Stephen Block. All right. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you. The motion passes and the meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much. Be safe, everyone.